Hey everybody, it's Mitch and welcome to my next video. Today we have got another Dungeons and Dragons Prestige class review. And today from the Expanded Sonics Handbook, we got our buddy, the Elocator. Now, the, the Elocator, it's an interesting one. Um, it's not one I'd really uh, noticed till recently. And yeah, so let's talk about them. So what we're going to go over in this video is first we're going to go over the entry requirements because well, that's what you need to get into it, just like any prestige class. Uh, we're also going to then talk about what you get uh, as an eocator, and then we're going to talk about how that could potentially work in builds. So that's what we're going to go over. Um, if you that's something you're interested, in, stick around, maybe subscribe to the channel, because we do this with every single class, prestige class, all that fun stuff. It's races too, so yeah. Anyways, let's get into it. So the eocator. Um, well... Uh, to get in, what you need is, uh, first off, you need a base attack bonus of three. So, okay, that's interesting. Uh, now, this class is an interesting one. It's a manifester class, um, but it's also kind of roguish. So, um, plus three base attack bonus is a, an interesting one. Um, skills, it requires concentration eight ranks. Okay, you're likely going to want that anyway, so that's not a big deal. Um, uh, feats, uh, it requires mobility and spring attack, but in order to get those, you're also going to need dodge. So, yeah, I mean, you might be able to get away with it with, like, um, you know, another feat to replace dodge, or if you can find class features, uh, classes that give you these feats uh, without requiring dodge. Okay, that works too, since you don't technically need dodge, but you're probably going to need to take dodge. Um, and psionics, you're going to need to be able to manifest first level powers. So not a big deal. And you're going to want that last one anyways. This class is pretty much useless without that. Um, so let's get into... So that goes over what it takes to become one. Um, personally, the ways to get in would be like maybe a scion or perhaps a wilder. Um, you know, grab like six levels of that. Uh, um, in order to get that base attack bonus. I guess you only need five with uh, the Wilder. Um, might be able to get the base attack earlier, but you need at least five levels to get that concentration anyway. So, yeah. Um, you could also go with Psychic Warrior. That'll get you there um, pretty decently as well. Um, it's not a full Manifester, though. So Psychic Warrior is it's an okay option, but, mm, but we'll, we'll get into that in a sec. Um, so let's look at what they get. So they have a D6 hit dice, not bad. Um, in terms of skills, they have a very large skill list in six plus int. They're very roguelike. Um, now for weapon and armor proficiency, they're proficient with uh, all simple and uh, martial weapons uh, and with light armor, so that's pretty good. Um, so you do gain some weapon and armor proficiency, um, which is very useful if you're like as a scion jumping into this. This is a good way to gain those proficiencies if you wanted them. Um, and just one level of dip, not, not bad. Um, though whether you go just one level or multiple kind of varies. Um, so power is known basically at, um, well, you're going to get it at every two, uh, two out of three levels you'll gain it. So basically, if you look at it, you, uh, in a block of three, you'll gain uh, power is known, not gain power is known, gain power is known. Then you reset and then gain known. So you know, levels four and five are both going to gain you powers. Uh, sorry, not four and five, three and four, my bad. My bad. So yeah, three and four, five won't. Um, but yeah, um, so over the course of the 10 levels that you get in this, you know, that'll get you a nice solid seven. Um, there's only going to be three levels that you don't, uh, two, five, and uh, eight. So yeah. So that's pretty nice that it does advance your casting class, which for that reason, it's better to go with a full Manifester, just because if you're doing a partial Manifester like the Psychic Warrior, you're not going to gain um, as much from that part. Well, the Psychic Warrior is still a decent option. Uh, so let's look at the next thing. So next up, you get Scorn Earth, and this is at first level, uh, which you also get Manifesting at at first level. So Scorn Earth, what it, it basically gives you a, a pseudo fly speed. It lets you like uh, levitate off the ground and move at full speed. So that's kind of nice. Like you can just kind of glide over water without any penalties. Um, you can you know move over land uh, as long as there's a solid surface. Now if it's not a solid surface, 
you take some heavy penalties on movement um, and you can't go very high in the air uh, very easily with this. But if you're just a little off the ground, um, you can move just as easily as if you were moving normally. So yeah, um, pretty good. Uh, Stone Earth is actually really, really nice. Um, they also have sidestep charge, which they're going to get as well at first level, um, which basically, um, uh, basically th this one's actually really nice, the sidestep charge. Um, it is an amazing, it is a feat uh, that they just gain for free. And it's an amazing counter to pounce. Um, it, it works for other stuff too, but it's amazing against pounce. So basically what this does is if somebody uh, charges you, you get an attack of opportunity against them. And, um, you know, it doesn't limit it uh, to how many attacks of opportunity you can make against a single foe. And there's, there's no limit on that. There's, it limits it on how many oppor uh, attacks of opportunity you can get normally. Like, you can't make any extra ones. But, yeah, so if you had, you know, um, uh, combat reflexes, then... You know, and you have a high dex, which you probably should with this class. You know, you can do some pretty crazy stuff, getting you know really, really high, uh, or getting a lot of attacks of opportunity. So you know, somebody comes in, um, you know, they charge at you with pounce, so they get a full attack. Now all of a sudden, you can respond to every single one of their attacks with an attack of your own, and you know, do a fair amount of damage to them on their turn. So pretty nice in all reality um now if you know your opponent doesn't have pounds it's not as good um so it it, this only works when your someone's charging you but very very good um when they do and charge is something pretty common um for a lot of uh, things to use it's a really common thing to happen um you also get opportunistic strike which just gives you bonuses on attack and damage um if somebody else already attacked your opponent so it's sort of like sneak attack but it's not, it's not precision damage at all. You're not actually doing uh, any sort of like extra damage. It's uh, a bonus to your attack. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's just a bonus to your attack. Now, this bonus, you know, doesn't stack with everything. Um, so uh, it's an insight bonus. So yeah, so I had to look that up for a sec. Uh, I know you guys hate it when I read um, but uh, read all of these, but yeah, it's an insight bonus. So that won't stack with all other insight bonuses, but for any other insight bonuses, you know, same types don't stack. But, you know, still not bad. And it's based, and, you know, assuming you don't have other insight bonuses, this is impossible. Whoops. Ah, sorry, I had to sneeze there. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, it's impossible to uh, be immune to because, well, it's not extra damage. It's, it's just not extra damage. It's a bonus to your attacking damage. So yeah, uh, you also gain a dimension step, which is basically just a psionic version of dimension door. Um, you gain that at third level. Uh, an opportunity to strike is at second. Uh, you gain at fourth level, you'll gain flanker, which is actually a pretty nice little ability. Um, basically what that'll let you do is it'll let you uh, Consider you uh, basically you can during your turn choose a square to consider yourself to be in that's adjacent to yours. So any of the eight squares surrounding you, or you can just not use it if you want. So now you have nine squares to pick from um, that you're in, um, and any of those squares you're you are in, even though you're not um, in terms of flanking. So um, you can use that to try and you know help your allies out. It can even work like um you know maybe your opponent set them up so they can't be flanked like they have their back against the wall uh well you know you just walk you know to the side and then use flanker and boom uh now they can now, now that now they can be flanked um so very useful for setting up a flank for your allies um yeah really really nice um they also get transporter um which basically just means they get it uh um, psionic teleport and psionic plane shift um, as powers for free. Like that, that's all it is. They just get to add those two powers to their uh, powers known list, uh, which if you're a wilder is amazing because they have very limited powers. So um, they can suddenly just put that on there. Um, 
you know, if you're a scion, it's still pretty nice. Their powers are somewhat limited. Um, Psychic warrior, it's, like it's useful regardless of which class you do, um, but very nice. Um, transporter, oh, that's one I just talked about. Uh, Capricious step, uh, this one's actually pretty nice. So they can take a second five foot step in the same turn. So it's not a ten, uh, so I've seen other ones where you say you can take a 10 foot step. Um, this is better because you I mean you can take a 10 foot step, but you can take two five foot steps, one right after the other, which amounts to a 10 foot step. But um, this one is two separate ones, which means although you have the option for that, you also have the option to five foot step attack, then five foot step back. So uh, what you can do with this is if your opponent is, you know, uh, a little ways in front of you, you can five foot step up to meet them, uh, attack, so uh, now that you're in range, then five foot step back, and now you're good. Like, that, that's all there is to it. That works um, really well um, if your opponent's uh, smaller than you. Um, if they're the same size, I'm sure there's ways to make that work as well. Um, like, uh, every other turn you could at least get away with it, because... I know sometimes, like when people are retreating, they'll, you know, five foot step back, uh, attack, five foot step back, and then you five foot step back, uh, five foot step forward and attack. Well, um, you know, you can do that a little faster. You can, uh, if you were retreating, you know, you can attack and then two five foot steps back, and now your opponent has to, you know, close the gap a little bit more. Um, they're not going to be able to full attack you, even though you full attack them. Uh, so that's nice. Um, and you can do that every turn, like while you're retreating. Um, if someone's retreating from you, um, you know, you can, you know, five foot step. Uh, and then uh, you can like more than five foot step. You can like try and move to the corners to try and pin them in a little bit, make it a little harder for them to retreat. Um, yeah, there's there's absolutely things, uh, make it so that they retreat backwards, then they're not really, like there, there's a lot of options you can do um, with that. Uh, tactically in order to make sure you're getting your full attacks every turn and try and make it harder for your opponent to. Um, then you get um, at 10th level, uh, I'm sorry, 9th level, you get um, a Dimension Spring Attack. Now, this is really, really nice because what Dimension Spring Attack does is basically when you do your Dimension Step, um, you can interrupt it partway through and get an attack. So you can dimension step part of the way, attack, and then dimension step the rest of the way, and that's all there is to it. Like, it doesn't provoke attack. It's like, it, basically, you're combining spring attack with your dimension step, and you're using the two together, which is really nice. You can use that to uh, pot shot an enemy, uh, and you can use it to, you know, attack some far off enemy that's just like taking pot shots at you. Um, and, you know, then get back to the battle. Uh, now, I, uh, I believe you can only use this, like, uh, you can't use this very often. I think it's, like, once per day that you can use Dimension Step at all. Or, but, you know, it's still nice being able to do it. So, pretty good. Um, now, the last thing you get at 10th level, this is one of the best things. Score on Earth at first is also one of the best. But uh, the thing at 10th level is probably the best thing you get. Um, although, you know, for 10 level investment, um, that makes it a little less good, um, but still pretty well worth it. Um, let, let's be real. This is a pretty good class. Um, so you get accelerated action, which effectively gives you a haste effect, but it's a little better. Now you can't use this while hasted. So that is a little bit of a downside, uh, even though this is better. So, um, try not to be hasted when you do this because, uh, haste will actually prevent you from using this, which is unfortunate um, because it gives you pretty much all the same benefits of haste. But instead of letting, uh, but you can choose to, instead of doing the extra attack with haste, to just use an extra power. Um, yeah, it, it basically take an extra standard action to uh, cast a, to manifest another power. Um, so yeah, again, you can use an extra power each turn. Pretty nice. Now you can only do this for five, I think it's five rounds a day, uh, which is limited, uh, very limited, but you can, you know, use it any round you want. So very, very nice. Now, 
Uh, so that's pretty much all they get, which is a lot. <laughs> Let's be real. Like, this is a good class. Um, so, oh, yeah, I didn't fully mention everything. So the um, average base attack bonus and um, uh, what is it? Uh, good reflex and will save, bad fort save. So, okay. Um, so when would this build work? This build could work well with the Psychic Warrior for sure, um, potentially with just a one-level diff, or although you can go the full 10. Um, just to get that score on Earth uh, without really losing too much. Um, not really a bad option. Um, you could always just do a one-level dip with any sort of uh, psionic class. But you could also do the full 10 and get that you know, accelerated action, which is pretty nice. And it's not like you're spending all these levels just to get accelerated action. You're getting some decent stuff along the way. Like, I mean... Uh, sidestep charge is really nice, although that's, again, only, that's at first level, so, you know, still with the one level diff. Uh, opportunistic strike, useful, getting that extra damage, um, assuming you don't already have um, insight um, bonuses. Uh, dimension step can be nice, so it's limited in how often you can use it, but still pretty good. Uh, flanker, uh, very useful flanker, um, especially if you have, like, a rogue in the party, you can set up some pretty nice stuff with that. Um, transporter, getting those extra powers, always good. These are some of the better powers to grab, too, and some of the harder to get ones. Because um, uh, I think you they're typically just on the um, uh, on one uh, type of uh, sign on discipline uh, list. So, yeah, you have to be like a particular discipline of scion to get them usually, but you can grab these with this. Um, capricious step, very nice. Um, being able to take that extra five foot step uh, every turn um, that you can take a five foot step really really nice and um, uh, dimensional spring attack super super useful uh, again can't use it very often uh, it's very limited in how often you can do it but still good still really good and excel so yeah there's like a million a million different things like this is a great thing to put on um, you know if you wanted to do like a scion uh, or a wilder, you could throw this in there. So some of the problems with Scion doing this is, you know, you're not, Scions aren't really heavy combat you know, combatants. They're not the best with wielding weapons. Um, but this could make them a bit better. And, uh, yeah, it could give them some some uses. Um, particular, I, and then there might be some good psionic powers to, you know, that help with that. Psychic Warrior could be very useful, especially with a, a single level dip. Uh, Wilder uh, actually could be quite useful as well. It really depends, um, but if you want to add like a roguish um, element to your build or something where you can like get places really fast, great, great prestige class. Highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Love hearing from you guys. Respond to every comment. Um, and uh, consider giving this video a like. That really helps out. Um, you know, just let me know you like it subscribe to the channel because we got way more of these coming. Uh, and as always, I'm Mitch, and I'll be seeing you.